so Bob, um, welcome to the war room. So there was a Supreme Court case, and um, Kim set it up really good. So you want to talk through just a, a little bit of that for us and what happened with it and um, just your thoughts? Sure. I'll uh, uh, I'll just expand a little bit on it. Um, the court case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court was actually born out of four different uh, Supreme Court cases and went to the Georgia Supreme Court. And there are four different counties, four different members that uh, that put those to the Georgia Supreme Court. And then the one of Lori Tullis, that's the one that made it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, Kim mentioned a lot of good things about that case, but the other thing that's part of this is all of this evidence, and it's not, it's not just stuff that we've made up. This is hard evidence. All of that evidence is that is docked with the U.S. Supreme Court. So anybody in Georgia, anybody in the United States can go to the U.S. Supreme Court, do a docket search on 23 TAC 1172, and they will have hundreds of pages of evidence that Kim has been talking to you about, my evidence, and then that of Lori's. So, so Bob... Has the Georgia, when I say leadership, that could be any other, the the top brass. So we'll we'll say that's Raffensperger, Carr, Kemp, his office, mm -hmm. um, Sterling. Has anyone reached out to you after the fact? I mean, maybe that's a maybe that's a dumb question, but I, I just the audience needs to to hear this and know this uh, officially. So that's why sure, I asked the sure. question. Um, if I can, Antonio, let me give you about a three or four minute history lesson and and how you know i got to this point and it should probably clear up some of the the question you just asked so right after the election of uh, 2020 um a judge from the georgia senate a judge i'll call him senator ligon but senator ligon was also a judge for 16 years in brunswick georgia so he led an investigation of the 2020 election and on december 17th of 2020 he sent a letter to the secretary of state to governor Kemp, to the ag and to the congress of georgia that there is too much and you can still see that in there today his recommendation number nine is there was so much evidence of fraud in that election that the election cannot be certified now, that was a judge for 16 years. So wait a minute. Re he repeat that just so that we can burn that into the minds of people. So uh, sure. Senator, Senator Ligon at the time, he had been a judge, I believe, for 16 years in, in uh, Brunswick County. His Brunswick statement County. was, again, about the 2020 election. Recommendation number nine is there is so much evidence of fraud in this election, the election should not be certified. I mean, wow. basically, he was told, and uh, and it was all it was all ignored. So here, let me fo follow up what happened next. So that was on December seventeenth. So just five days after that, on December twenty second, Rathensberger puts out a press release, and it's still out in the cyberspace. puts out a press release that says that. He has drawn together all of Georgia government to go after all the fraud that's been identified in this last election. He said, as of December 22nd, 2020, he has over 250 credible cases of fraud in Georgia. So you're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, the Secretary of State is gonna do the right thing. He's gonna go after all this fraud that Judge Senator Ligon brought up. So then just two weeks after that, on the January 6th, actually two and a half weeks, on the January 6th, 2021, Secretary Raffensperger sent a letter to the United States Congress. This letter did not go to Georgia or Georgia citizens. It went to the United States Congress and it went to Vice President Pence. Now this 10 page letter had 42 false statements in it. Basically, the letter that went to Pence and Congress 
was in case anybody in Congress from Georgia said, we're not going to certify the election. Pence could reach in his back pocket and say, I just got a letter today from your secretary of state saying there was no fraud at all in Georgia. Everything's perfect. Hmm. So he's telling us, you know, on the 22nd of December, he's got 250 credible cases of fraud. On January 6th, he told the United States Congress there was nothing no fraud in Georgia. And then he told Channel 11 News about a month after that, that he can't wait to get some of the 2016 click cases cleared so he can start on the 2020 investigations. The, so this guy is just deception after deception after deception. So the, the, the same one that he sent the letter to Pence to say it wasn't no election fraud. And after oh. Ligon yes. pretty much said, Hey, you can't you can't certify this. Mm. Exactly. The story gets a lot better. Come on, Kim. Get, no, let, come on, Bob. Well, come I on. know this story. The, the next see, chapter, turn the page. Yeah. It's so good. See, he, he he breaking news to me right now in the audience. You know, the audience of kooks. Hang that on. Believe, <laughs> that believed that, that that their the election was not legitimate, you know. So yeah, go, pour it on us. Okay, Bob. so if you look inside that letter to Congress, the ten page letter to Congress, there's forty two false statements, and one of the biggest false statements in there is Secretary Raffensperger tells the United States Congress that he did a machine audit across Georgia, and he says. And uh, and these are the six counties that we did the machine audit in, Morgan, Spalding, and so on. There are six counties, and uh, and so I I started digging into it, and um, there's a a colleague of Kim's and mine, a Kevin Monkla. He and I had shared some information back and forth, and the audit had not taken place. So he told U.S. Congress, citizens of Georgia. The United States that we audited these machines in Georgia and everything was fine. So I started talking to different people to see if they could help me. I spoke to Ligon, I spoke to Burt Jones, I spoke to a lot of politicians. And then one day I sat down, this was July 17th, no, July 15th, 2021. I sat down with Speaker Ralston. He, he has since passed, but I sat down with Speaker Ralston and I shared all my evidence with him because that that 10 page letter really revealed about 28 allegations of crimes that the Secretary of State has committed against the citizens of Georgia. So I sat down with Speaker Ralston on July 15, 2021, and he wrote a letter to the GBI to investigate the Secretary of State and the election. Number two man in Georgia, nothing happened. So then I'm still trying to get this in front of people. And I sat down, oh gosh, it would have been the end of November with Senator Gooch. And Senator Gooch is also from North Georgia. And uh, I shared all this with him and he said, Mr. Coover, your problem's not with me, it's with the governor. And I said, well, I understand that, but you know, the governor isn't taking any of my calls. And the next thing I know, I've got the governor's phone number. So I went home. The next day I called the governor. It was his voicemail. And he texted me, what can I do for you? Because I, I left him a pretty graphic uh, message about 28 allegations against Secretary of State. And so he and I texted back and forth. And um, and then he asked me to sit down or to cover this with his deputy executive counsel, Evan Myers. I'm thinking, hallelujah. The governor's listening. I get to speak to one of his chief attorneys. So I went through all of my evidence, 28 allegations of crimes against the citizens of Georgia. And... Uh, Evan Myers and I went over this stuff for two months, Antonio, two months back and forth. And not one time did the executive council try to say, 
oh, well, we don't. We think your facts are incorrect. We think your evidence is incorrect. They never once said that. So at the end of two months of a collegial investigation, if you want to call it that, Evan Meyer said, Mr. Kubert, we can't prosecute from the governor's office. He said, we want to refer your case to the inspector general. I said, great, that's what the inspector general's there for, to go after corruption in the executive branch, corruption, fraud, and waste. And this is all of those things. So he refers it to an inspector general, and you might under know this name, Antonio. His name is Scott McAfee. Hmm. Chapter three. Well, you know what? <laughs> I, I, actually, I had this wrote it. I, I did make some notes. <laughs> And then this Wait till was, you get to chapter three. So I, I got two. This, this is my two tentacles because I'm trying to make it, you know, do a thing to show a couple of tentacles. So the SEB chair is tied to a certain individual. Yes. And the Fulton County judge prosecuting in Fannie Willis is tied to a certain individual. All right, go ahead. C- continue your. You're, you're right Scott on target. Scott McAfee. Scott mm-hmm. McAfee. So anyway. So I now go through all my this, materials. This is getting good, Kim. I got I to gotta give it to you. I'm telling <laughs> you. You don't have to start like a, maybe we need to stop doing War Room, do like a soap opera, a Georgia. <laughs> it is a soap a opera. Jo- it's yes. just ugly. Mm-hmm. But hopefully it'll never be lo- by mm-hmm. like Sheriff Labatt's soap opera. But that's off track for now. Okay. Okay. So anyway. For those that know, no. So, so now, now I sit down with the Inspector General for, I worked through all of these materials with him for about two months. And then one day, and the reason it's so clear to me is I was was walking down the produce aisle of a little tiny grocery store in Blue Ridge, and my phone rings, and I look down, and it's Inspector General Scott McAfee. And I take the call, and and Scott says, uh, because we spoke quite often, we emailed back and forth quite often. And uh, he said, well, Mr. Coover, I've got to boil these 28 allegations down to just the one that's in my lane. He said, I'm going to boil it down to the Pro V&V audit, which was the audit of the machines, which I spoke earlier about. And I said, Scott, I said, I don't think that's appropriate. I said, this is all corruption. This is all fraud. He says, well, I've narrowed it down. I'm going to go after this one item. So he goes after this one item, Antonio. And I don't know, about three weeks after that, I get a closure letter that went to the governor. Well, there's another common name. And went to me and the closure letter said that the uh, the Pro V&V that there was no fraud in the Pro V&V audit. And uh, so I immediately call Scott back and I said, I said, Scott, I says, how how is there no fraud in that audit? He said, well, I talked to the secretary of state and I talked to the owner of Pro V&V and they convinced me that. This took place. And I said, well, Scott, how many. How many counties do you talk to? Because right in that letter to Congress, Secretary of State said, I did an audit in these six counties. The audit report didn't have those six counties listed. The the phony audit report didn't have any machine serial numbers or any security seals that the county official had to break. It was just a fraudulent audit. And so... So they just threw, uh, basically so, told you they did an audit and just threw something together, no serial numbers, and, and, and just say, hey, let me just throw something together and throw it at them. We know that this right. is not legitimate. It's not even real, but that's, that's we'll at cool. least look like we did something. So he Bob's pronouncing, this is Scott McAfee. He's, he's pronouncing his last name a little different. The same judge down in the Willis case. That's okay? correct. Same guy, but but go ahead. Well, you should wait because Bob's going to get a button. I'm going to make it for him. You want to be a judge? Call Bob. Just wait. <laughs> so, so I send this stuff to judges by Bob. Go ahead. I send this stuff to McAfee. Oh, and so I told him. I said, Scott. I said it didn't happen, and I um, I had talked to all of the counties. These six counties. So then I'd open records request, so I'd have a paper trail that I could give McAfee. So I give it to Scott, and um, I was waiting on one last one to come in, and Scott says, I've got them. So I know he saw them and read them. 
my last email from him said I've got them. So then McAfee video is silent on me. I don't hear anything for a couple months. And I've got other people trying to contact him. He's not getting back to me. And um, so finally, one day we get this uh, email, a uh, cryptic email from the inspector general's office. And it just said, Scott McAfee no longer works in this office. Signed, G. And uh, so I'm a little searching only to find out that Kemp appointed him a superior court judge, which we now know is the one who, who worked for Fannie Willis years ago, by the way. Um, so then just to continue that vein of my story, Antonio. Um, so wait, I, I want you to cover that up. So yeah. Scott McAfee, because, you know, we got to pull this, make this front and center. So Scott McAfee was assigned to do a an investigation as the inspector general. And he ended up leaving the office where well, they put together just anything. They knew it was not legitimate and said they did a, a, a legitimate audit, I guess, across the states and just threw it back at Bob or whatever. Then after that, he was appointed, it sounds like, by Governor Kemp. And guess who gets the Fannie Willis case? Scott McAfee. And I know that's what we're getting to, but I want to make sure we get that front and center. Oh, so this and is this is this is old this is old business, old tentacle type situation. Well, not only that, so he's an appointed superior court judge. So how many incumbent superior court judges get voted out? It's got bigger implications than just that's a an elected position. But if you want to be a judge, call Bob. Okay, Bob. Bob the judge maker. <laughs> So yeah, let me, a new name. Let, let me give you the, uh, the, the <laughs> second piece of that. So Kim and I have been, we have spoken with so many individuals about our work. And um, one of the individuals I also spoke with was the uh, district attorney for the Appalachian Circuit. And uh, she came, there's a group that I'm part of, and, and they've always helped me with all of my work. And it's called the Mountain Patriots out of Blue Ridge. And so she came to one of our meetings and um, as part of that meeting, I gave her uh, my briefing book, which is a couple hundred pages of the evidence against Secretary Raffensperger. And so I gave her a quick download of what that was and, and said, I'm going to follow up with you, give you the rest of the material to see if you have any questions. And she was always, you know, very open to me. And then all of a sudden, she goes radio silent on me as well. And Guess what I, happens? I drop, I drop more evidence off on in her office. She never call me back. And then all of a sudden, I hear ah, she's been appointed as. Let me guess. Wait, let me guess. <laughs> let me guess. She received an appointment from the governor's office. Call Bob. So listen, we we talked about pattern recognition uh, before. Shout out to Jack Posobiec and you know what he does, um, free Steve Bannon. Um, but this is pattern recognition right now, and that's why we got to we we have to become better at laying the points out. I know that Kim gets it, Bob gets it. I'm still learning, um, but it seems like when a public official is faced to do the right thing the they become a part of the beast they get they get a tap on the shoulder or whatever to become one of the snakes in the head of medusa is that what sound like it's happening uh what that's actually what's happening bob because that's absolutely, what i see right now absolutely antonio and the other place you see this is not just in, in making these people part of the machine not a good machine by the way but also the investigative side of Georgia. So I can't go, Kim and I can't go to the GBI. A lot of people have already been to the GBI with this, but guess what? The GBI reports to Kemp. State police report to Kemp. All of the investigative law enforcement agencies in Georgia report to Kemp. So then when we stand back and we want to understand why hasn't anything been done in three and a half years 
when on day one almost a judge told us there's evidence, to me it's pretty clear. So this kind of explains the club. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're this, watching this, this, via this, Bob the club being expanded. Yeah. So this <laughs> this explains why the club behaves the way that it does because you've got all of the arms of uh, many of the arms of prosecution and court system are reporting back in some kind of capacity to the same guy. And this is why it's not good to have dictatorships. Okay. I've been saying on this show for, I don't know, maybe over a year now that the state of Georgia is a small version of what's going on on the federal level. That's your Green New Deal, backroom deals, and all this other kind of stuff. The way they move and operate is the same thing. They couldn't get the Green New Deal passed, but it was a template for everybody else to follow. So a lot of these bills, they just sit up. They don't get passed, but they're somewhere where they can be read. So you have the copycat states of people that were, you know, maybe part of, I don't know, maybe they've been to a couple of backroom meetings in Davos. And maybe they walked out of a couple of them and people were asking them questions and they ignored them. They didn't want to answer any questions. Anytime I see President Trump somewhere, he always answers. He never runs from a question. He yeah. invites the questions. You know, it's not prescript or anything like that. Um, it's just like this meeting today. Uh, nobody you see on War Room, we never get this is all live. We never give any show preps or anything nobody hey what you gonna ask me what you gonna say what you know you come you come on here you present your your information and then we can have some uh areas of that we don't agree or whatever the case may be that's how we get to a better um a better outcome uh potentially but this explains the club because they have something to fear but here's the difference between the people who have not or will not choose the club. We fear God more than man. We fear God more than man. That is why we have a duty and an obligation to live and spread the truth. We don't care how many arms of government the governor controls. We don't care how many levers of power the president controls because we don't answer to either one of them. What say you, Bob? No, I think you are right on, Antonio. Um, one thing that I'll just share real quick with with uh, yourself and some of your viewers is the the amount of relationships that patriots have made throughout this state um, is is due to the good Lord. We're all God fearing people. And, um, and it's just like Kim Brooks and I, I mean, we have, um, you know, we've just been supportive of each other through this entire thing. And as we're, we're going down our paths, we, we meet other patriots who are just like us. And we just met with probably a couple hundred patriots in a church in, in central Georgia. And Kim and I and Lori and Joe Rossi gave the, a similar presentation to what we talked about today. And people are, are really beginning to understand that, you know, we have the almighty on our side. And I think that uh, that's going to give us a winning hand. Absolutely. So um, you have anything else you want to share or tell the people how to follow you? Cause I, I we got to get into some of the data that uh, Kim brought for Gwinnett County uh, specifically in we can have you have you back on anytime that you uh, want to come on War Room, and we can just do a whole hour or whatever you know you want to do uh, because okay. it's all about getting the information out for the the work that you guys that that you've been involved with. Absolutely, there is there's a website. It's Write the Vote, and that's W R W R I T E, Write the Vote, all one word. dot net. So just go to okay. Write the Vote. dot net. You'll see a lot of the work there. Uh, um, one thing that I would just share uh, as a last moment would be the amount of evidence that Kim has and Lori has and I have 
it is one it's irrefutable and two it is somewhat overwhelming but people if they take the time to understand what it is and and how it fits together to your earlier point um we've got a lot to do to fix the state but a lot's got to happen in a hurry yeah. so that's all i've got antonio i certainly appreciate you having me on today all right no problem thank you for the work you're doing man uh absolutely incredible and um our thoughts and prayers are, are always with people who are fighting to to do the right thing i think i figured out what the p means now and for uh kim's middle name patriot that's it why not ever think of that